you know, as soon as soon as you go live, the cats start to come, and they um, they try to sit down, and then block the camera. All right, so we're live. We're gonna see if anyone hops on. This is brand new for me. Um, first first video going live, and then hopefully uh, we can have some people that uh, jump on and see what's going on here. Um, so I wanted to do episode 91. We're at our 91st uh, video, which is cool. Um, we're getting up there. We're almost at 100. And uh, I just wanted to outline it's been about three, four weeks now since I did my last video. And I know on the last video I said that there was going to be more videos. Um, however, um, there's been just a lot of health issues going on with me. Um, nothing, nothing related to any of the amputation stuff. So no need to worry about that. Everything's fine with that. Um, but I got super, 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 super sick right after I did the last video. Um, they basically what started happening is I got really sick and, uh, my abdominal was just extremely like painful. Um, I was going to the bathroom 48, 50 times a day, no exaggeration. And uh, we were in and out of the ER several, several times. So about six or seven times. And uh, doctors were looking at me. They were doing some diagnosis, CT scans of my belly, all that fun stuff. Uh, we first thought it was a appendicitis. Um, then they told us to come back. Um, they did a, we went back there a couple days ago. They did a CT scan, came back and said I had colitis but not which one they sent me home and said, you know, just eat right. You'll be fine. Um, so we started doing that two days after the fact, um, they came back and they said, Hey, you have colitis. It's your, your colon's extremely inflamed at this point. And, uh, I actually started bleeding. So bleeding internally. So that was fun. Um, and then, um, Right after that, they said, um, take these antibiotics, come back if you have more problems. So then finally, the uh, couple nights after that, uh, the pain got so bad to the point that uh, anything I sipped or uh, drank on uh, basically was coming immediately out, the, out of my stomach and uh, it was literally out of my body within a few hours. So. Um, I lost a ton of weight uh, between that two weeks. I, I dropped anywhere from 20 to 30 pounds, and I was already skinny, so I literally looked like the movie The Machinist. So, and I, I just literally, I was just skin and bones. So um, that that wasn't fun. But uh, so they, they came up with the diagnosis finally when we went to the second ER with uh, ulcerative colitis, and uh, it is a autoimmune disease that basically attacks the colon. Um, lucky, luckily it wasn't Crohn's. We thought it was Crohn's and, uh, Crohn's affects the small intestine and the large intestine, which I feel for each one of those people. Um, it's it, it, ulcerative colitis and colitis, uh, no, I'm sorry. Crohn's disease is the same, except, um, Crohn's affects different areas, uh, of the intestine and it's just, it's not fun. So, um, so we spent six days in the hospital. It got to a point where um, literally just like I couldn't even couldn't even urinate anymore. I'm just going to get into some details, not all of them, but I just couldn't even urinate anymore. It was blocking um, my bladder. So therefore it wasn't even filling anymore. And it was just, it was bad news. So, and uh, my mother, my mother has colitis. And the whole time that we were going through all this, you know, I had the symptoms, I had some of the signs, but the weird part was is that it wasn't like, um, my mother had it where she had multiple different symptoms at one time where I only had, you know, one symptom come out every once in a while and then it would go back, everything would be normal. And then all of a sudden another symptom would pop up, come out and then something else would happen. So there was nothing, um, there was nothing really truly pinpointing exactly what it was. So we knew it was colitis, but I guess we really didn't know what, what, uh, what part of it was, but, uh, we went into the hospital, they did a colonoscopy, they took a look up there and then said, I said, I had ulcerative colitis and then also celiac disease. And then I kid you not, just like a few days later, right after the fact, I got uh, ammonia on top of it. So, and the weirdest part was, you know, I was sick. I was sick at the beginning, but even when the ammonia light came on, like 
I didn't really have any symptoms. Like usually when I get a cold, I get like super sick. Um, I'll have like 90% of the symptoms and I'm just railroaded. Like I can't do anything else and I can usually struggle through it, but it's like, it's to the point where I'm almost on my knees, but it's, it, it's absolutely, it, it was brutal. So, and uh, I didn't do any of the movies or any of the videos that I just hit a point where I was just barely trying to get by with what I could throughout the day and then just trying to live. And uh, we just wanted to see where it'd go from there. So it, uh, it, was, it was bad. But th I mean, the good news is, is that, so it can be managed. Um, it can be managed either. Um, it, it's something that I'll have to live with for the rest of my life unless I get my colon removed and then have what's called a jeep pouch. Jeep pouch is something that they attach to you and then put on, uh, put on the side of you and then you just walk around with a bag for the rest of your life, or um, they they can treat it through medication. And if you treat it through medication, you just have to be very careful. Um, just what you eat, what time you take your medication, what medication you're on, so on, et cetera. And then uh, you can keep your colon. But uh, if you don't, then your colon will eventually, what will happen is that the flare-ups that they call them will get to a point that it's just not even sustainable anymore. Um, very similar to what happened to me where I couldn't even, you know, urinate and everything else along with it. Um, it will get that bad and then eventually the medication will run out. So um, as soon as you get, as soon as you get in what's called remission, you just kind of want to stay on it and then um, be all about the diet, keep, you know, food diaries, which I do. Um, I keep track of every little thing I put in my mouth now and um, what time um, how many times I use the restroom. So it's kind of helpful because um, then you can kind of uh, pinpoint or whatnot, see what the uh, symptoms are or what have you and what causes you to flare up or what causes your stomach to get worse. So um, these are all wonderful things that you get to go with through uh, the disease. So, and uh, there's no cure at the time. All they have to do is either A, remove the colon, or B, treat it by medication. And uh, treating it by medication is long. You know, my, mother, my mother's been fine. Like, she had, she had a couple flare-ups when she was younger, and uh, she managed to get it in under remission, and she was fine. Unfortunately, I've always had, like, stomach issues, but there's never really been a pinpoint on it, and nor has it even gotten to a point where it's been that bad. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure this is something that I'm going to have to – you know, deal with for the rest of my life and uh, with constant flare ups. So, and, you know, medication, diet and exercise is going to be key for me on top of all the other issues that I have with uh, my amputated legs. So it's, it's going to be fun. Um, I see someone joined and they just hopped off, but anyways, um, but I'm trying to get into doing more of these live videos so we can try to get some more interaction between people maybe, Someone logs in and asks a question um, while I'm talking and uh, we can get an answer towards them. And then what I'm also looking forward is uh, to start doing, you know, support stuff um, for people with amputees. And maybe I'm going to split off and do a subdivision of ulcerative colitis. I don't know, um, but we'll we'll do that. Um, cause a lot of things that I didn't, that I, I did know is that through hangers and through all the peer mentoring that I did is that unfortunately people with amp you know, amputees and whatnot are unable to get out of the house. They're unable to get out of the house. They're not able to get to their meetings, either fear of falling or, um, just being sick or just not being able to get from point A to point B, unable to drive because their right foot, you know, just is amputated or, whatever the reason is. And I know a lot of people do want to come and do ask, you know, have a lot of questions. However, they just don't have the resources literally right in front of them. And I think um, if we start doing live videos and we start doing, you know, groups and whatnot, we could uh, get some people and hopefully get some help to them and uh, get some people in somewhat a uh, little bit better moods over, you know, what, what we're facing every single day. But anyways, so, um, to the amputation portion, we'll we'll get to that. Is uh, so everything's have been going fine with that. Uh, my neuroma that I mentioned previously that they removed about it's been about six weeks now. Um, my swelling has gone down almost completely back down to normal. Um, we do have a casting on Thursday to go get my leg casted and go get a new leg. 
So um, the good thing is, is that now after I have this new light casted, I'll have three sockets now, which means I'll have a very skinny socket. I'll have a moderately heavy socket, and then I'll have a severely, oh my God, you have to lose weight socket. So um, as you start becoming in more, ampu uh, more of an amputee and you start, you know, um, spending more time and then um, things start to pop up, it's, uh, you start to collect a lot of parts laying around. So, and the good thing is, is that as long as you have those parts laying around, then if something does happen, you know, if you gain weight or if you do, um, something else does happen and you're, you know, you're unable to walk, you can somehow mend yourself. And as long as you talk to your prosthetist and he or she is okay with, um, you making these modifications, then, you know, you're golden. Um, but in the meantime, uh, so a video ago, uh, I'm going to scoot up. Uh, we talked about, I did a little video on the iWalk here. iWalk is a little crutch thing like this that is for people that either gotten a knee injury or a leg injury or don't have a leg or just don't care. No, I'm kidding. But if they, if they have an injury, what they can use is they can use this iWalk and they can get around that way. Um, I was using crutches for... A long time and I just I kind of ditched the eye walk um, it never I never really walked effectively with it and then come to find out that I was just completely idiotic and I didn't even set it up properly so I kind of got so frustrated that I haven't been able to do anything for the past six months I just kind of got up one day um, went into the closet pulled it out there was dust covered all over it which is a darn shame because it costs a pretty penny and uh, looked at it and I said, oh my God, I am stupid. I set this up wrong. So um, turns out it was a lot taller than what I was because I'm a little short dude. And um, it, it just, it, <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't fit. So when I was walking, it literally felt like I was doing this number and it just never wasn't really uh, correlating too well. And uh, don't get me wrong, when I started walking on it, it, uh, it definitely felt weird. It wasn't your normal, typical prosthetic. Um, it was... Kind of think of it as a peg leg, so to speak, and uh, definitely take some used to uh, getting used to. And as soon, but as soon as you do, you can go out and do things. So I've been able to uh, luckily start helping the wife pick around the house, do some chores. Um, we still do eBay, so I set up eBay orders and whatnot. That was usually my primary job before all this went to hell in a handbasket, so to speak. Um, so it. Uh, you know, it's been allowing me to get around, and it's if you don't definitely have one, uh, definitely still recommend, even though it sat in the closet for as long as it did, to go pick up one. Um, it's it's an as absolute uh, godsend. So it allows you to get up um, and do whatever you need to do in terms of you know cook dinner, do chores, um, whatever you need to do. Um, so. So yeah, everything's everything's good with that. So it's it's just starting to go out the light at the end of the tunnel, and uh, things are definitely getting better. And I'll be able to go back to work, go do you know um, my job, and go do the daily things that I once used to do. And I mean, don't get me wrong, it wasn't uh, during the time that I was down. It wasn't a complete robbery. And what I mean by that is it wasn't a complete robbery to me that I wasn't able to do anything. It just completely either severely hurt or it was just to the point where um, it was difficult on crutches or um, just literally getting around. And I completely understand for the people that can't get up and go around and go do the things they need to do because I was one of them um, for a few months. So, and, but luckily the iWalk lately, as soon as I got that all taken care of I've been able to go and do things that I used to do and uh, try to get out even out of the house and try to do some things um, walk to the literally to the mailbox and just get the mail for so to speak that used to be a challenge before but now it's not um, so I think we'll leave it at that um, I'm still looking for some input if anyone wants to comment below on uh, so many Q&A sessions. I think I'll try to start on Thursday. I think maybe I'll start maybe in mid-afternoon. Uh, we'll pop a we'll pop a live stream up. See if we can get any people to join, and uh, we'll go from there. And I, I'm 
we'll end up at the first couple times that we do it. We don't get a lot of response, but as soon as people know that we start doing it and word of mouth starts going around that uh, we'll start to get some people um, joining and everything else. But in the meantime, um, everyone, I'm still, I'm still alive. Even with still uh, all the issues that I've been having and uh, the, I'll be, I'll be walking soon. So a um, couple of people have joined. Hey, everyone. Um, but as soon as I, as soon as I get my leg here, everything will be back to normal, and uh, we'll be able to get back going to the things that uh, we loved before. But uh, in the meantime, um, if you like the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you have any uh, questions, go ahead and comment below right after this live stream is done. I hope you guys like the live stream. This is the first one I've done. Um, and I'm going to try to maybe do this uh, even more uh, just because I think it's better. It's a little bit quicker to do rather than sitting here and editing it because we do so much stuff throughout the afternoon. And whenever I get off of work, it's just a little bit more um, troublesome for me to do the editing sometime. But uh, otherwise, let's see, look at this. We have all these people coming on. We have four people now. <laughs> See, as soon as I'm about to end the video, everyone's coming on. All right. Well, anyways. Well, we'll leave it at this. I don't know what else to talk about for right now. But um, if anyone uh, anyone has any comments, go ahead and put them below. Um, like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to subscribe, I'm definitely going to be doing more videos and uh, live streams. So go ahead and subscribe. And uh, if, it, any, if there's anything... Um, that I can do to help anyone out with any amputee questions. And then on top of ulcerative colitis, I guess now we can uh, go about in that direction. But uh, in the meantime, everyone take care and uh, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you later. Bye.